Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's Dr. Galvin with another coronavirus update. Uh, today, we are going to talk a little bit about the controversy with the J&J &J and AstraZeneca vaccines and blood clots. We're going to talk about what that means, whether to be worried about it or not. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about how those vaccines work and how they're different than the mRNA vaccines, the Moderna and the Pfizer, which have no association with blood clots whatsoever. Um, first off, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Galvin. I'm a board certified emergency medicine physician, as well as obesity medicine physician uh, around Charlotte, North Carolina. I run a functional precision medicine clinic and also still work in the emergency department. Been doing these updates since all this stuff started over a year ago. Um, up today, as of today, we've done 800 million immunizations worldwide. That's 18 million doses a day. That's about 5.2% of the worldwide population are immunized so far. Here in the US, we're at 190 million immunizations, 3.4 million a year, um, sorry, a day. And at this rate, we'll have about 75% of the population immunized about three months from now if we keep going at that rate. Um, we think that that's around the area where we, we start achieving herd immunity. The variants may change that because the variants are more contagious. But, you know, so that's, you know, the, the data so far. The majority of people in the U.S. have gotten the Moderna or the Pfizer. Now, good news out of Moderna, they've done some studies. And um, I think uh, a group out of Germany, or there was a study in the New England Journal of Medicine also that showed that six months after immunization with Moderna, there's still strong antibody response and still 95% reduction in risk of severe infection. Um, and so that's great news. And since the Pfizer vaccine is very similar, hopefully that translates over. Now for the sort of not so good news, you know that the, there are authorities calling on putting a halt or a pause on the um, the J and J vaccine. Now why is that? Well, you've heard about some problems with AstraZeneca, which is used in Europe. And what happened there was there were about 34 million vaccinations given with AstraZeneca, and what they started noticing was that they found 220 cases of unusual blood clots, either in the cavernous sinus, in the brain, or in the gut, um, that were then followed by bleeding problems because the platelets dropped. Um, so 220 out of 34 million, and most of these people were relatively young, healthy people, and so there were some questions raised, is there an association? And that was unclear at first. We've talked about that you can have coincidence and that blood clots occur at a certain rate in the population, but these blood clots are unusual, and, and now we've looked at the data, and it really does seem to be that there's an association. And so this is what we know so far. Um, that there is definitely a, a very slight association, an increased risk of these blood clots with the AstraZeneca vaccine. Now, the problem is that the AstraZeneca vaccine and the J&J &J vaccine use similar technology. They use a sort of traditional adenovirus technology as opposed to Moderna and Pfizer, which use this mRNA technology. Now, we've talked about those vaccines quite a bit, but I don't know if I've ever explained how the J&J &J and AstraZeneca works. And so in that case, what they do is they take an inactivated or, or a live virus that's unable to replicate. So it's a harmless virus. With AstraZeneca, they're using a, a virus that comes from chimpanzees. With, uh, with humans, they're using, a, or with, a, I'm sorry, Johnson & Johnson, they are using a adenovirus that's a human-based adenovirus. And what they do is they splice in the DNA to make that spike protein that we always talk about, that spike protein that allows the, the, that the virus to bind to the cell. And if we can make antibodies against that spike protein, then if you get exposed to the virus, those spike proteins get covered up, the virus can't stick to the cell, can't infect anybody, and the immune system comes and kills it. So messenger RNA is basically going into the cell, telling the cell to produce those antibodies directly. These two vaccines use an adenovirus. And what that does is they inject this adenovirus into you. It goes into the cell and it gets taken into the nucleus of the cell. Now the Moderna and Pfizer ones don't go into the nucleus, but these ones do. And then they inject that their DNA into the nucleus. Now their DNA can't be replicated, but that little piece of, of DNA that for the spike protein can be. And so that DNA is floating around in the nucleus, messenger RNA recognizes it, does exactly what it does with the other vaccines. It makes a copy, leaves the nucleus, goes to the ribosomes, where the ribosomes start cranking out copies of that spike protein that are then released from the cell. The immune response to that produces antibodies and memory about that. And then when you actually see the real virus, you have a defense system all set up. And that's the difference. The 
J&J and AstraZeneca use a viral adenovirus to basically kind of infect our nucleus to, and trick it into making mRNA. Moderna and Pfizer basically directly injected the mRNA, which goes right to the factory and makes it. So it skips the whole nucleus thing. Now, you know, 34 million doses, they found 220 um, clots. It's a pretty small number, but it's significant, right? Nobody wants to get this, and these are younger, healthier people. Um, and what they found was that in these people, when they looked, they found antibody, and, and, and the syndrome looks a lot like what's called thrombocyte, or um, I'm sorry, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. So heparin's a blood thinner that we give, and in rare cases, you can make, it can it trigger you to make antibodies against this thing called platelet factor four, or PF4. And PF4 um, can trigger clots, and also it can, it can exhaust your platelets and cause bleeding later on. And they found that the symptoms that these people were having were very similar. And so they looked and they said, you know, do they have any antibodies against PF4 like you do with heparin-induced thrombocytopenia? And guess what they found? They did. And so something is inducing some antibodies against this protein. And there's been a couple of theories. One thought is that maybe these people had a preceding coronavirus infection, you know, COVID, and had very mild symptoms and didn't know it. And maybe that had something to do with it. Well, they tested them. None of these people had evidence that they'd been previously infected. Um, then the thought was, well, maybe natural immunity um, uh, against these viruses causes some cross-reactivity with PF4. Well, they quickly discarded that because if that were the case, we would see these clots in people that got the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, which we have not seen. And also we would see it in people that actually had COVID and we haven't seen this particular pl uh, platelet, um, this clot plus platelet depletion in those other things. So there's a couple possible explanations. One is that in order to get that, that adenovirus into the cell, we have to give mass amount, I think 50 billion copies. And that DNA from the adenovirus, some of it gets degraded in the, um, in the circulation. And maybe that degraded DNA is somehow binding to the PF4 and causing an antibody response against it. There also, you know, there's, it may be that a small number of people have a natural uh, antibody against PF4 that normally doesn't cause any problems, but somehow this vaccine is doing something to sort of disrupt that process and short circuit things and maybe that's the cause, we don't know. But ultimately, what is, how does risk look like? Well, you know, 220 cases out of, a, out of you know, uh, out of 34 million is about 0.0006%. So about one in like a quarter million chance of developing one of these things. Um, but you know, you gotta look at your relative risk. So remember, these are younger people that this is happening to. So it really depends on what environment you're in. So if you are in some place that's got a lot of COVID, then the risks of the vaccine are much lower than the risk of getting COVID. And so um, I believe the British Medical Journal, um, ZDog MD did a great talk on the same thing. And I think I'm gonna use his quote. Um, I think they looked and they said in England, it, it be, between the ages of 20 and 29, your risk of developing a blood clot from the, the AstraZeneca vaccine was 1.1 in 100,000 doses. Um, your risk of ending up in the ICU if that's in that same age group was somewhere between 0.9 and 6.9 per 100,000. So potentially seven times higher. So the risk of getting severely sick with COVID far outweighs the risk of vaccine. Now, if you're in some place like Australia, where there's very, very, very low numbers, then the risk of the vaccine is probably higher than the risk of COVID. So there's relative risk there. And so Australia, you know, likely will not, in places that have low numbers, it's probably not a good idea. The other thing is, it's, you know, it may not be a good idea if you're less than 50. If you're, you know, if you're on something that might enhance clotting, like contraceptive pills or smoking or things like that that raises your clotting risk, then that AstraZeneca or J&J &J might not be a good choice. You know, the, the so there is a little bit of relative risk. And we talked about this, you know, like these are new vaccines. Now, that's a very tried and true technology, the adenovirus technology. But, you know, we've given a bunch of vaccines and we've seen this very, very small 0.0006% risk um, that is not there with the, the mRNA vaccines, the Moderna and the Pfizer. So 
I think that there's being a call to pause and study more to see if there's really an association with the J&J. &J. And the thought is that since they're sort of the same vaccine, that the clotting issue may be seen in both. We don't really know. I'll keep you guys updated. Definitely our risk in the U.S. with, with relatively high numbers. Remember, I think we're up 8% since last week. Numbers are going up. Getting vaccinated is key. We have not demonstrated those problems with the J&J &J vaccine. Um, if you can get one or any of them, I would still recommend getting them. I'm, I'm, I'm counseling my patients to get the one that you can get. Um, you know, if you're younger, say less than 50, and you have the opportunity of choice between J&J, &J, Moderna Pfizer, I'd pick Moderna Pfizer just to be absolutely safe. Because again, no association with clots with that other vaccine. And again, almost all of that 800 million people worldwide that have gotten it, have gotten the mRNA ones, or a large percentage of them. Anyway, my name is Dr. Galvin. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Stay tuned for more. If you like me, please follow us on Facebook, like us and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear your mask, look after yourselves, look after those around you and look after your families. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.